Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, we could hear you. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I wasn't quite sure. Thank you very much for that. Welcome, everyone. God bless you all. This wonderful day. Sun is shining. And uh, we come to glorify the Lord and uh, lift up his name. And I uh, just want to welcome everybody this afternoon. It's so lovely to have you all join us. Um, so we're just going to go right in and just commit this time to the Lord. So, Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this privilege, another opportunity, oh God, that we can be gathered, Lord God, and maybe not under the same roof, but Father God, wherever your spirit is, Father, we know that you, we are connected in the spirit. So, Father, we thank you that you join our hearts this afternoon, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will just hover in every single home, in every single living room, in every single bedroom, wherever we are, Father, and we're on this call right now, Father God, I pray your Holy Spirit will be present, Father, to do exactly what you have to do and speak to us exactly the way you want to speak to us this afternoon. Father, I pray that you prepare our hearts and our minds and our spirits, Lord God, to receive from you, oh God. Father God, we just want to just forget about ourselves, forget about ourselves right now, and concentrate on you, Father. Not concentrate on what's going on around us, but focus on you and what you want to do and what you want to say. So, Father God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is welcome this afternoon. We welcome your presence. Father God, even on this platform, we come against every every negative attack of the enemy, any principality or any power of darkness that will try to interfere. We silence the enemy right now and we tell him, you're not welcome here. The presence of the Lord is here. And Father, we just vow to give you all the glory. Father, we vow to give you all the praise. Father, we vow to give you all the honor that is due unto your name. We, work, we worship you this afternoon and we commit everything into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 It's so good to see everyone. Um, is everybody happy? <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> is everybody full of joy? Uh, Chris said, full of joy because we know mm -hmm. happiness is temporal. You know, happiness is when something happens, that's what it means. Something's happening. If it's not happening, are we still gonna be have the joy of the Lord? Yes, we are because our joy is not conditional, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not dependent on what's going on around us. It's the inner peace that God gives us, the inner Amen. joy, you know, Amen. well, all hell could be breaking that loose, but God gives us that stability. Mm -hmm. He gives us an anchor to hold on and to, to be still and know that he is God and that we trust in him no matter how the wind blow. You know, we, we can get shaken at times and blown away, but we just have to hold on and be firm know that our roots have gone deep you know he's he, he doesn't want us to be shallow christians you know like every little wind blow we blow over you know that you know like you know we don't want to be like that with where you know anything any little thing little puff the enemy come and blow on us and we're just we keel over we don't want to be like that we want to be solid we want to be firm we want to be rooted and grounded Amen. We, we want to be secure. You know, we want to be solid. You know, we don't want to be frail and weak. And no, long gone are the days where we're weak. When we were babies, we were weak. We depended on our parents for everything. But now our dependency is on God. Mm. God, we need, we need the Lord like we need fresh air, like daily bread. We need him. Every single passing moment, we even more so now, we are more desperate for him because we need that guidance, we need that safety, we need that protection, 
You know, we just need to know that we're covered under the blood. You know, where the devil can do us no harm. Mm -hmm. so I just want you to know that if we abide in him, he said he will, he said that he will abide in us and in anything that we want. Once we're connected to the true vine, we know that we are, he is a vine and we are the branches and we must bear fruit. We must develop. We must enlarge. We must grow because we're planted by the rivers of living water. You know, today we have the living water inside of us, but we draw from his word. We draw from his revelation. We draw nourishment from and revelation, but the presence of God and the living water is now inside of us. His presence is now inside of us. If we ever realize that we're never alone, you know, sometimes people say to me, oh, you can go by yourself. And I'm saying, no, I, I'm never alone. And it's me and Jesus. We got our own thing going. <laughs> we got it all going on. <laughs> me and Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to always remember that you're never alone. You might feel lonely. That happens to a lot of us. It doesn't matter what kind of crowd we're in. We can feel lonely. But always remember, God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. And he promised he'll never leave us. That is a promise. He said never, means never. He'll never, 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 never leave us. And he will never forsake us. So I just want to read a scripture and before Keith just gets another worship music uh, ready. And I, but I just wanted to share a word, a scripture um, with you this afternoon. And um, that will be taken from Matthew, Matthew chapter six. And I'm gonna start reading from, um, I'm gonna start reading from verse six, from six to 13. And the reason I'm sharing you this um, chapter is it's a familiar text. It's about the Lord's prayer, but there's a revelation in this prayer. It's not something that we just recite like it's a, you know, a poem or something, or we just repeat it and we don't actually know what we're saying. You know, the disciples asked Jesus, I remember them asking him, Lord, teach us, teach us to pray. And the reason they said teach us is because they wanted to pray the way Jesus taught them because once Jesus sets the pace, once Jesus sets the standard, we know that we've got the foot, we've got the master print, we've got the master teaching us. He's a teacher. And I just want to read this to you because I know many of us, we, we know the Lord's Prayer, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you some nuggets of revelation that I received some years ago. And uh, it has changed my life. So I just want to read um, Matthew chapter six. I'll, I'll start from chapter, i start from verse six. And I'm reading from the Amplified. Actually, I'll, I'll start from, I'll start from verse five. And it says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray publicly, standing in the synagogue and on the on the corners of the street so that they can be seen by men. I assure you, solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. Verse six, but when you pray, go into the most private room, close the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And the father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Verse seven. And when you pray, do not use me meaningless re repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Verse eight. Do not be like them, 
praying as they do. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. But verse nine, this is where the Lord is teaching them now. It says, pray in this way. And this is what he said. This is how he said. When you pray, pray in this way. He say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, letting go of both the wrongs and the resentment. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And <clears throat> I know many of us, we've, we've been taught this from a, as, as a child. We, we know it as the Lord's Prayer, and we recite it before, probably before we go to bed or whatever. But let me tell you, it's a model. It's a, a, it's a blueprint. It's a, it's a, Jesus gave it to us as a template. You know what a template means? It means that you're going to follow the, 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 the way how you begin, the beginning, the middle, and the end. There's, there's a lot to this. It's a, when we pray, say, our Father. Now, this is, talks about relationship. We're saying, God, you are my Father. You are our, all of our Father. You are our Father. That's what he's saying. This is talking about the relationship that you have with God. You're, you're, you're bringing God down to, your, to earth. Now, he's not a God that's in heaven sitting up there, but he's, he's, he belongs to us. He's, he's our, we are his children. He's our Father. He said, thou art in heaven. Then it said, start to hallow his name. Hallowed be his name. It means when you start praying, don't just say, oh, Lord, I need this, I need that, and give him a long shopping list. He said, oh, I need, I need a job, I need a husband, I need a car, I need a this. You, and you start giving him a long, it says, this is how you start off your prayer. You start hallowing his name. In other words, you start praising his name. You start saying glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You start appreciating him. You said, hallowed be your name. You start saying, Lord, I thank you. You're, you're great. You're wonderful. We thank you. We honor you. We hallow your name. You, we reverence the power of God of, of coming into his presence. We reverence that. We don't take it lightly. We know that the presence of the Lord is an awesome place. And we say, Lord, we hallow your name. In other words, we worship your name. Right, then it says, thy kingdom come. Thy means your, yours. Your kingdom come. <clears throat> your will be done. Can you see, it's not about us. It's not about our will and our decision and our, our, our dreams and our, our visions. It's about his will. So we ask, Lord, let your will be done. Let, it says, thy kingdom come. That's telling us that there's a kingdom. Our father has a kingdom. Amen. Thy kingdom come. We're asking for the, God, the kingdom of God to come close to us. Because there's a kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. It's not, the, it's not a knighted kingdom. We know we live in the knighted kingdom. But this kingdom is the heavenly kingdom. This is, the, this is the way how God does things in his kingdom, not the way we do things in our kingdom. It's the way things done in heaven. We want it to be done on earth. That's why it says, your kingdom come and your will be done. We want the will of God to be done. You know, this really touched me because I... You know, I always say, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to go here, accomplish this. And God is saying, where do I come into this? 
Where do I come into this? It's, we have to say, Lord, your will be done. <laughs> your will be done. Let your purposes be done. Amen. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let it be done on earth. We are on earth. We want the kingdom of heaven to come here on earth. You know, there's no lack in heaven. There's no fighting in heaven. There's no violence in heaven. There's peace and, and joy and protect. There's all this in heaven. We want this, whatever is in heaven, to be manifest here on earth. This is why you said, let thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth, Lord. As it is in heaven, we want heaven to be mirrored here down on earth. So it says, give us this day our daily bread. And it's talking about for provisions. We need daily provisions. We need daily subsidence, like we eat bread, like we eat food. God will provide for us whatever the need is. It doesn't have to be food, but Father, our daily bread is telling us we need this on a daily basis. Amen. Day by day, we need supernatural provision. Yes. So give us, Lord, this day, this day that we're in, not yesterday, not tomorrow. We can't, tomorrow's not promised. We're talking about this day. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. This our daily provisions. Whatever our needs are, Lord, we ask the Lord to give us the, this day. We're only concerned about today. Tomorrow's, yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. We need provisions for each and every day. So it says, forgive us our, our debts as we forgive those that trespass against us. So our prayer is one of consecration. We said, Lord, we have done wrong. We've made mistakes. We messed up. But forgive us. Lord, our sins, forgive us our debts as we forgive others. Because he, there's, as the Lord forgive us, we will be merciful to others, to forgive others their sins. So it's important that as we receive God's forgiveness, as we receive his mercy, as we receive his blessing, as we receive his washing, as we as God is not holding anything against us, that is what we have to do to other people. We have to release other people, not hold grudges, not hold resentment. We need to release them as, as we want forgiveness. Yes. So we must forgive others. Yes. Can you not understand? It says here is a format. It's a formula. It's not something that we just say, oh, by the way, I didn't have to be done, then that can come, that will be done. And we just reel it off like it's like a script. It's asking God to have mercy on us. Lord, forgive us. If God can forgive us of our shortcomings, if God can forgive us of our sins, if God can give us, forgive us of our mistakes, we should also forgive others, people that make mistakes, people that mess up, people that say bad things, people that even stab us in the back. We have to release them. Yes. It's not easy, but we want to receive that forgiveness we have to do unto others. Because as God will have it done unto us. Yes. Can you not, can, are you getting it? It's, it's, it's a revelation that I got. It's not a script anymore. Now it's something that we have to do. We have to follow. So then it says here, and do not and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now that's telling me that there's temptations everywhere. <laughs> there's evil everywhere. But God, in your mercy, deliver me. Deliver us, lead us up from the temptation, deliver us from that accident, deliver us from that, that, that car crash, deliver us from um, stab wounds, deliver us from people that are, are trying to run us down and, and, to, and, to, and to hurt us. Deliver us, deliver us from evil. It says here, 
lead us not into temptation. That's telling me that there's, we could be led into a, 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 a trap. The devil could have a trap for us and we could just walk straight into it. But Lord, deliver me. Divert my footsteps in a different way so that I didn't fall into that pit hole. That pit that they were setting for me. Deliver me, lead me, not into temptation. Take me a different route. That I avoid that, 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 that evil that the enemy has for me. Yes. Amen. It says for thou... It says, for thine is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. The power, all the glory belongs to him. That means we are, we are definitely knowing that the, once we got the kingdom, once he's got the power and we give him all the glory, it says forever and ever. This is what we're going to do forever and ever into eternity. We're forever and ever from now till eternity, we're going to say, Lord, thy kingdom come. Your will be done. <clears throat> we're going to say, thine is the kingdom, the power. All the power belongs to you, Lord. All the power and all the glory belongs to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen means so let it be. That settles it. That settles it. Amen. Amen means that's it. It's done. Seal. Seal and sealed and delivered. <laughs> Seal and delivered. Amen. Amen. So be it. So be it. To God be the glory. To God be the praise. All the power and all the glory belong to you, O oh God. Because you're great and mighty, you're powerful, and you know just how to lead us. You know how to guide us. You know how to avert us. You know how to protect us. That is the Lord's prayer. That's the prayer how he taught us how to pray. We first hallow his name, and we first worship him. We ask God's forgiveness. We ask him to cleanse us. Ask him to wash us. And then he said, just like how I've washed you and I've forgiven you, you are to forgive others. Amen. You're not to walk in unforgiveness. You want God to forgive you, but you don't want to forgive anybody else. No, no, it doesn't go like that. There's a condition. You you ask God forgiveness for you so that you can forgive others. We God is merciful to us so that we can show mercy. God be praise. I just wanted to share that powerful revelation with you this afternoon. And I'm just going to hand over to Keith that he can just minister a song. And I just want the word to just seep into your, into your spirit. <laughs> and the revelation. This is, this is the Lord speaking to us and saying, this is how I want you to be. This is how I want, this is how I want you to, when you're praying, remember, you stand before me, holy, you stand before me asking for mercy, but you have to also show mercy. So thank you, Keith. Yes, we serve a mighty, mighty good God. He is strong and mighty, he's powerful, he's awesome, he's great, <clears throat> he's wonderful, he is a mighty good God. That's the God that we serve. You know, sometimes we don't realize the greatness of our God and we limit him. I say, God, you know what? I, I'm, I'm believing for this, I'm believing for that, but I, I'm not quite sure, but it's like, why are we putting the limits on him? God can exceed that. Whatever we're believing for, God can do more than that. And so we don't put God in a box. We take the limit off. We take the lid off because he's a mighty, great God. Um, you know, this week we've been having such a wonderful time in our morning's devotion. And uh, we every, every single day we just get so blessed. We just get so empowered. We just get so enriched. You know, God is so faithful. He always, always shows up. 
and he always, always speaks to us. And we've been getting some real revelation. Um, you know that light bulb moment? I know that Junior has been talking about the light bulb, the light, Marcy has been talking about the light, but you know, like when you're in darkness and then the, you switch on the light switch and it's like, bing. <laughs> that's, that's called a light bulb moment when it, you just go bing. And when I, I got the revelation of the Lord's prayer, it, it just went bing. It wasn't just like a little, a little prayer anymore. Now it had meaning, now it had power, now it had authority. Now I was able to um, pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray. And I know that we pray every day and we have been getting some results. We have been getting some breakthroughs. And I'm just gonna give uh, um, an opportunity for those of you just to wanna share a breakthrough. Um, uh, what God has done for you. Um, you know what? I have I'm gonna I'm gonna share this testimony because it, it was awesome to me. Um I've, I've, I'm I'm just thinking which one to share because I've got a few. Um it's like um God just um was revealing to me that um oftentimes we miss it because you know we don't realize that you know Every day we, 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 we ought to ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do today? <laughs> That's what he dropped into my spirit to ask him. So you ask me this every day because I wasn't asking God that. I just used to just have my prayer devotion and then get on with my day and just thank God as I go along. But you know what? Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord God above, we pray for a restored connection. The enemy is trying to steal the testimony out of the mouth of a teacher. And we pray, Lord God, that you will personify and exemplify the connection that they have. No glitches, no lagging, no, no issues in, in stagnancy. We pray, Lord God, that the word and the testimony that's being shared will be able to bring not only root and life, but be able to be fruitful in abundance according to which you have created it for it to be to be received by our dear sister, uh, dear, dear Pastor Grace. I pray, Lord God, that you will be able to strengthen their connection, resolve their the internet issues, because Lord, you created it and anything you create is of good. The enemy will try, but we don't want to speak what the enemy is trying. We are speaking of what you are doing, what you are personifying. In the name of Jesus, restore, recuperate, replenish. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, God bless you, Keith. I mean, my internet has just frozen. I don't know what's happened. But anyhow, I was going to share you a testimony um, about the goodness of God. Um. This this week, okay, um, something really wonderful happened, um, and it's it was phenomenal because what happened is that we we had a situation where we had this awesome debt that had been accumulated, and it wasn't anything that we could rectify and um, what happened was that it was it was something that was accumulating 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 and you know what someone when we told the person um, about this debt that we had let me just get cut to the chase what it what it was we 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 got we, we got um we've got an accountant okay now this accountant bill was accumulating 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 over time and it got to the stage that it it was an enormous amount of pet uh, that we had to pay to this accountant 
Anyway, what happened was this account, we contacted the, the accountant and we told him that we don't understand how this debt had accumulated. And, you know, is there anything that he can do to help rectify this situation? Now, I thought he was going to say, oh, well, you can pay it in three parts or pay over 12 months or blah, blah, blah. But you know what? The accountants turned around and said to us, the accountant said, I will pay that debt for you. It's 2,000. Jesus. Jesus. Hold on, I put Chris on. <laughs> how, how often, guys, how often does I, that I, happen? <laughs> the accountant said to us, money is no, op no object to us, to him. Wow. He said, I will pay this debt for you. Now, this debt was £2,300. Oh £2,300. So, £2,300. 400 pounds the, the accountant said to us don't worry about it I will pay this debt for you now I didn't know if I was hearing properly mm -hmm. I, I said sorry can you can you say that again he said I will clear this debt for you Chris, uh, you just have to just. Anyway, I was just flabbergasted. I was in shock. I was overwhelmed. I was, I was blown away. I was thinking, God, you love us. Okay, I think we're back on. Just bear with me. No, no, come on. Sorry about that, folks. A little technical hitch. Well, I was. I think I, I got to the point where I was telling you that we had an. We've got an accountant that does our financial affairs. And what happened? We got this tax bill. And when we looked at the amount on the tax bill, it was two thousand. 400 pounds and we were like what Chris was like what but when we contacted our accountant and said we received this bill through the post of 2,400 pounds what can you suggest is there any way that you can, we can deal with this because it's you know it needs to be dealt with urgently and there was a time limit on it i think you had to pay within the next 10 days or seven working days before it um it will you know you get a fine so the accountant said don't worry leave it to me and we thought okay then he said i will clear that debt for you i said what he said, I will clear the £2,400 for you. So I was still in shock. I was, I was horrified. I was blown away. I, I was speechless. I was in awe. I wanted to cry. I said, God, you love us so much. God, you love us. I said, Chris, God loves us. He loves us so much. If we hadn't have paid that debt within the next um, um, seven days, we could have got a CCJ. Does anybody know what CCJ is? A county, <laughs> county court judgment. Yes, county court judgment. That's right. But the accountant said, I will pay this debt for you. I had to just sit here and just say, I'm, 
I am giving God the biggest praise. Amen. I am giving God the biggest honor. I am giving God the biggest thanks. I'm telling you, I am giving God who loves us, who cares for us. You know, I'm a, with me and Chris, we are givers. We love to give. I love to give. I love, you know, when you enjoy giving, I love it. I will go anywhere and give you and help you and do and volunteer my services. And I will love to, I love to bless people. I love to take them out. I love to treat them. I love it. I enjoy it. You know why I love it so much? Because I, there was times when I never had it to give. But even when I didn't have anything, we were still giving. I remember when we have, were down to our last meal, people would be coming into our house for dinner and God would bless that meal. That last meal, he would multiply it. So it would feed, it would feed 10, 20 people on our last meal. This is, these are the graces that we have on our life where God just bless us because we are givers. And it doesn't have to be money. We give, we give all the time. We treat people. We love people. We embrace people. We take people in. We bless them. We feed them. We clothe them. We, we do all that. But God loves us so much that when we're in need now, when, we're, when our backs are against the wall, when we don't know where to turn and we didn't know what to do, God canceled that debt like that before our face. Amen. Amen. I'm just thanking God constantly, giving him glory, giving him praise, giving him thanks, because that was a debt that could have caused us um, to have like a, a county court judgment. But to God be the glory. God stepped in just on time. I, 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 said, I said to the accountant, what, well, you're going to pay that debt for us? He said, yes. He said, leave it to me. I will pay. It doesn't matter. I will clear that for you. So I just wanted to, this is the biggest testimony that I had this week. Apart from God revealing to me that he wants me to ask him, what will I, will I, will I have him to do? every day say lord what are you, what are we going to do today what would what would you have me to do what what is the will of god for my day what is the will of god for my life but i just wanted to share that testimony you might you might think oh gosh that is a miracle it, it, it was a miracle absolute miracle so i just had to give god thanks for that I was, I was just so grateful to God, the fact that God loves us so much that he would deliver us, deliver us from evil. So I just wanted to just um, share that with you because that was an awesome, awesome testimony this week happened to us and to God be the wonderful glory. I just want you to unmute and just give God a praise. Think about something that he's done in your life and just say, God, glory, all the glory, all the praise. Amen. And all the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank thank you Jesus. Father. Father, we honor you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord. You are God of more than enough. You're a God that comes in just on time. You're a God that deliver us. Deliver us from the evil one, Father. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us and getting us out of a situation that could have been serious, Father. We thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If anybody else has a testimony and want to share, <coughs> just feel free to um, put your hand up or on mute. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anyone?
Praise be to God. You know what? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you an opportunity because I know that we've got, we've been fasting this week. We've been fasting and I know that even if you can only fast half a day, do it. Because I don't know if it's because I've been fasting where I've been getting breakthroughs and revelations and God has come stepped in. I don't know if it's because of the fast, but all I'm saying is we've been fasting and dedicating, consecrating our day, consecrating our life, consecrating our walk, conse con consecrating our heart, consecrating our walk. And even if you can only do half a day, let me tell you, God will step in for you. You know, I just want to say that today we, we've got communion. We've got to communion. And I just want you to just, if you haven't already got your, your, your emblems, you just need a bit of Ribena. <laughs> Come on. Ribena, grape juice and a bit of cream crackers or a bit of bread, we're going to bless it. We are going to consecrate it. So we can't have wine. We're going we're gonna to share <laughs> communion. <laughs> no Baileys. <laughs> Not Baileys, red wine. No Baileys. Great, <laughs> great wine. <laughs> great wine. Yeah, we are going to sanctify it today. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to share communion. We're going to share in the communion. Koinonia, as Chris says it in the Greek. <laughs> I love when he, he comes out with his Greek. What does koinonia mean, Chris? It means a sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to share the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. God is here. God is with us. And God is going to meet us as we meet with him. We're going to share communion together. So I just want you to just, if you need to nip away and get your, your piece of bread or wine, we're going we're gonna to need that for later on, okay? So I can see Keith's hands up. So I'm going to ask you, Keith, to uh, unmute and share what God has done for you this week. God bless you. Um, I... Yesterday, as most of you know, that I wasn't well, I wasn't feeling very good. And that's not what the testimony is, but it's part of, um, I kind of started my fasting a bit late because it was like, I had to kind of keep asking the Holy Spirit. And with my fleshly mind, are you sure, Lord, is that what you want me to do, to sacrifice, to do this, to, to base on this? Like a lot of people do things like food and stopping with food but I don't eat like everybody else. And I'm like, God, but you know, I, I could go a whole three days without eating a thing, like no problem. And I said, Lord, that would not be a kind of struggle to me. And I was asking God and questioning God. And I'm like, God, like everybody else is started. You know, like that time when you feel like you're, you're running in a race in school and you're left behind by everybody else. And you think, Lord, I need to catch up. Like what's going on? And God said to me, the thing that you talk about so I went back to all the recordings and I'm listening to all of these different things. And I thought, wow, OK, I came to the, for the teaching that I'll illustrate was about when I was talking about the struggles that I have with masturbation. And I was processing. I'm like, Lord, I know the trauma, the, the reason why I use these things is because of pain relief, because pain pills don't work for me. They just do not. I could take a tramadol and it does nothing. So I'm now on day four. That's the start. I'm on day four, no interaction with self, more dedicating to Christ, even more than before. Trust me, when I felt the struggle and I went through from day one was the shakes. At nighttime, I'll be shaking so bad, like so bad. I borrowed my next door neighbor's pregnancy pillow and yeah, my, my, my one's coming today. So it just it's just the idea of being held because of the trauma trying to overtake, trying to, well, you could do this to get your own relief, your own pain relief. 
they too with back issues, leg issues, even groin issues, head issues, arm issues. Everything was just alert, alert, alert. And I'm thinking, wow, enemy, I see what you're trying here. You're trying to get me to go back to the pain relief, but I'm not seeing the relief that God is going to give me if I keep pushing further. Day three. <laughs> that was the weird one. Had basically um, yesterday when we was in the prayer clinic, I had chronic diarrhea and I'm not eating anything. <laughs> so I'm thinking, Lord, where is this coming from? I see it as a manifestation of the enemy trying to resort me to come back. They had to inflict my entire body. And I thought, no, even though in between running back and forth from the platform, doing the prayer clinic and stuff, I literally carried on this fight. And I thought, wow, Lord, this is a good illustration of the strength. Isaiah 40, 29, where when you are weak, he shows his strength. So I stayed focused on him today, totally clear of diarrhea. I thought, what's going to happen, Lord? What's going to happen next? What is the enemy going to throw at? You ask these questions, but I said to myself, today is day four. Still have the pain, still have the shakes, but I will still push and pursue after Christ. So I can't Amen. wait to keep pushing. I can't wait to, I'm going to get to day 30 to, to year three, year four, year five, where I'm just going to keep pushing because the dedication that I'm doing now is to serve you, Lord, with everything. We sing those songs, I surrender all, but do we really? That was the question. Hallelujah. First song when I put play because I was like, Lord, I need some worship music because I'm really battling here. And that was the first song on random that came up. And I'm like, wow, am I only surrendering all? Even these pains, even these miseries, even these shakes, am I surrendering it all? Sometimes I like to listen to Sister Rachel because she's so inspiring with beyond her knowledge. In fact, all of us here that go on the platform in the mornings and doing devotions or even on church days you're so inspiring in so many different ways because there's different aspects i realized that in multifaceted things i've actually started my podcast as of yesterday so started to record all of these different things and what god is revealing me i'm telling you i am needing a new desk because it's my desk is filled with sheets of paper of things that are just being revealed working out how to use things like neuroplasticity to change your brain waves which is mm. affecting behavior and showing these different things and trust me i'm it's a worldly terminology but when you in, embrace god and put god in the midst of it i'm talking to people who've been raped as well in the midst of all of this and we are i say we are because it's no longer the blame and blaming that person for doing this or blaming ourselves for doing this. The amount of songs that I've shared, gospel songs that I've shared. And then I showed them, look, this is what the science says. So science brings facts, but God brings truth. And this is the thing that God is showing me. It's like more than one testimony in one, but things are changing. And trust me, God can change no matter what it is. And I'm so proud, not just of myself, but what God's helping me with through these circumstances, through these things. I never would have thought I was led to a movie about a drug dealer who he was honestly, well, it's more the fact he was a documentary, like a docu video kind of thing. And his struggles in not just abusing people by giving them drugs, but he was using it himself. And I thought, my gosh. And those symptoms he talked about, I'm like, wow, Lord, okay. This is actually illustrative because it's like your body's dependency on an action or taking something or consuming something. We don't realize it. The lust of the eyes, that's all it takes. The lust of the mentality, the lust of the memory in my case, the lust of the trauma in my case that I was trying to turn around to be a pain reliever and not just pain reliever in physical sense, but mental sense. Anytime a person would give me any type of frustration, including family, I had to change it. But I could only change it by giving up the thing that I thought was helping, but it's not. The same thing is another one real quickly, my family. There was a, I don't want to kind of reveal too much because I want to share the recordings to, to friends and family. My family, there was a truth that came out that all I can say is it explained, God revealed because I've been praying for my family, like why is there so much discontention? Why is there so much smiling with the face, but the, the body is already out the door? They're all nicey, nicey, nicey. And to be honest with you, I wanted to run for my own family. I said, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get my house, if God willing. If I get my house in Ireland, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Like, I want to leave. But then I said, Lord, but 
I can't leave with things unresolved because if they can't answer it, my prayer can. So I'm praying constantly, consistently. So when my auntie randomly called me, and that's why well, I say randomly, God appointed me, the conversation that me and her had was so beautiful. It was unbelievable that most of us, both of us were both crying afterwards. We we're crying afterwards. And we were literally, while we were praying, the same prayer was coming out of our mouth. The literal same words, the same timing, the same, it's like it was rehearsed. And I said, God, somebody else sees what I see. And I'm so proud of that. And I said, God, you are the author of, of everything. You, we say the author and finisher of our faith. You're the author and the finisher of reconciliation, changes, re, re, re -check, re regurgitation, rejuvenation, everything that is powerful and necessary and needed. You are the author of all of that. But it comes through faith. It comes through dedication. And it comes through committing yourself unto God. So I'm, I'm proud of these two major things for me. I'll be honest and open. I'm so proud of it. And I'm just praising God. That's hence the songs today. So yes, glory Thank to you. God. Thank you. Amen. 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 Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, I don't know about you, but that deserves a praise. Hallelujah. That deserves a glory. That deserves a thank you, Jesus. Amen. When you, you when Jesus. you see a life that's been transformed from trauma, from 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 all sorts of things that the enemy had to trip us up and to trap us, and the Lord comes in and He delivers us and He heals us. Oh, keep that is a testimony that I'm just so blessed by because I'm telling you, I was telling somebody to yesterday, I said, when you got a broken leg, you can put a plaster on it. You can put a cast on it. When you've got a cut, you can put a band-aid band on it. But when you've got a broken heart, that no surgery can correct that. Only the surgery of the Holy Spirit can go in and to cleanse and to heal those broken pieces of our lives. The trauma, the heartache, the, 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 the distress, the anxiety, the worry, the frustration. Only the Holy Spirit can go in and heal those internal parts and to make them brand new again and to put you back together again. You're looking at me, you're looking at a miracle right here. Because the enemy is trying it again in the name of Jesus. We break every form, every means, every manner, every time our dear past of grace speaks on a testimony. She's silenced. Heavenly Father, break the chains. We may think it's just a simple common or internet issue. But it's a rep repetition that I see. And Lord, I pray against all these rows of the enemy that he will not be victorious because we are in the name of Jesus we are break every chain that the enemy is trying over this platform in the name of Jesus I cover it plead the blood over it completely from every factor every connection every internet connection we pray that Lord you will break all forms we pray over Pastor Chris and Pastor Grace's laptop there will be no more hindrances, no more struggles, no more intervention by the enemy, no more plots, plans, schemes and deceit, no more dishevelment. In the name of Jesus, we break it and pray for reform in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Uh, you, thank you, Keith. You know what? To God be the praise. To God be the, God is going to get the glory. Whether the devil like it or not, he's going to get the glory. And I thank God for, um, we've got another device that we're using. It's my phone at the moment. But you know what? Um, I'm just going to ask us to just uh, 
prepare for our afternoon's um, offering right now. And I'm going to ask you to give to God. Give generously. Give from your heart. Know that God loves us. He's provided for us. Supernatural provision is going to be made. So it's not just for today, it's forever. Forever. And Father, we know that your hands are not short. And Father, we know that, Father God, you will deliver us from any attack, any, any plot, any scheme of the enemy that's ambushed against us, you will just turn that situation around. So Father, we pray a blessing to everybody that they give cheerfully from their heart that Lord, they will not walk in lack, but they'll walk in the abundance that you've given them, Father God. Bless this offering, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you thank you thank you so much i will give you all my <clears throat> worship i will give you all my praise because you alone are worthy worthy to be praised thank you thank you for that beautiful song we thank god for that for that uh worship i just my heart just went out to god when i thought about his goodness and my heart just went out to God. Thank you, Lord. I will give you all my worship. Father, I'll give you all my praise. You know, we have to have a grateful heart. We have to have a thankful heart. We have to give God the glory in every situation. <clears throat> right now, I'm not going to delay any longer. We're going to just introduce uh, our speaker for this afternoon. And no other than. Chris Brown, everybody. Pastor Chris, welcome. Let's show him some love, everyone. Amen. <laughs> Let's welcome him. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome. welcome Hallelujah. Welcome, Praise welcome, be welcome, to welcome, God. Welcome, welcome. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, it's so such a privilege to be here amongst you, truly. Um, and I say this sincerely that I love you all um, from the depths of my heart. And uh, I really just really um, want to share something with you. And uh, as this is um, an occasion where we're going to uh, come together, and I, when I say come together, I know it's uh, via Zoom, but uh, we're going to share um, fellowship through communion. And uh, really just really, I just wanted to lay some foundation as regards to um, perhaps the history or shall I say, bearing record of um, communion, how it was administered and the result of it and the importance of it and the importance of doing it in the right spirit and the right heart. Um, what I would say is this, is that um, communion is very important um, aspect of uh, life of a Christian. And uh, what you're doing is identifying um, with a broken body, of Jesus Christ and his shed blood. And uh, in terms of identifying, in terms of participating with one another to commemorate um, all that he did for each and every one of us. Now, um, what I realize is that there's power in the community. There's power, in fact, in love feasts. Um, uh, what you found was that love feast in the early church preceded communion itself. Uh, in other words, sharing the sacrament, so to speak, the bread and the wine. So you had the love feast. And um, I, only, I really just uh, reading it today, it's like God's uh, thrown a, 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 a deeper light on it and the importance of it. And uh, the love feast itself was not just a matter of eating food, but what it did, it um, removed all the barriers, all the, um, in other words, it broke down all the things that we might perceive to um, give honor to people or uh, preferences to people. So all prejudices were removed. So it was a, it was a love feast that would, um, proceed to having a communion 
And, uh, and so even uh, if we look at, for instance, if we look at Acts, and Acts 3, Acts chapter 2, sorry, and uh, we read down, we read down from uh, verse 42, we have a sense of what it was to have fellowship in the early church and the impact it had upon the early church. Now, this is, this, um, what we have is an example that followed um, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where um, a number of believers were gathered together in the upper room and the Holy Ghost in the, in the form of uh, a fire of clovers descended on them and they were baptized, totally immersed in the Holy Spirit. Now, having said that, they were empowered then to go forth and preach the gospel. And so we have Peter as an example who would, um, yes, the same Peter that rejected Christ uh, three times and said, I don't know the man, he cussed bad word, with the with the with the, and such forth and denied Christ. Um, the same Peter was now empowered to preach the gospel. And, uh, and so we, we see that uh, 3,000 souls were saved on one day through him preaching the gospel. And then it says on um, verse 42, this is Acts um, 2, um, verse 42, they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to fellowship, fellowship, to eating meals together and to prayers. So this is a love feast, eating meals together and to pray. Um, for prayer, prayers, and a sense of awe was felt by everyone, and many wonders, and in other words, signs and wonders, attesting miracles, were taking place through the apostles. So what it, did it do? The fellowship ushered in signs, wonders, and miracles, the sense of eating food together, and uh, Grace um, uh, so uh, intimated, she loves uh, me say koinonia, which is this sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit in the presence of you eating. It's only not empowering you physically, but spiritually, you see. And, um, mm -hmm. and so it goes on to say, um, and all those who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together and had all things in common, considering their possessions to belong to the group as a whole. And so what we're having here is we're having a communion. In other words, a commune now of believers together, and they're sharing their belongings. In other words, they have one heart, one soul, and one mind. They believe in that what invariably what is there is not just theirs, but the, is for the use. It's a, for the benefit of the whole, for everybody. And uh, it says, and they began selling their property and position, possessions and were sharing the proceeds with all the other believers as anyone had need. And so the, the foundation of this is love. Let me just say the foundation of all of this is love. God is love. God is love. Love is God, agape love, which means the, the, the essence of being able to give and give and give. It's not conditional, it's unconditional. So what they were experiencing is a deep sense of the koinonia of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship and the ability to love out of the depths of their heart and be able to say, look, <clears throat> what is mine is yours. And invariably what then is yours is mine. That was the reciprocal um relationship that they were having one to another that's what we're having tonight. hallelujah <laughs> and so so, so the, the the sense of um the love feast is very important anyway it goes on to say that day after day they met in the temple area continuing with one another continuing with one mind this is a commune with one mind and breaking bread in various private homes breaking bread having communion having um the lord's supper the last the lord's supper and uh 
day after day, breaking bread in various homes. They were eating their meals together with joy and generous hearts, praising God continually and having favor with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved. So the Lord was as in, as they were communing, as they were loving one another, as they were having fellowship, the Lord was adding to them on a daily basis. Hallelujah. And so if we if we go quickly to um, Acts 5, and again, if you, Acts, Acts, no, Acts chapter 4 and verse 31 and 32, and it says, now the com company of believers was what, of one heart and one soul, and not one of them claimed that any belongings, anything belonging to him was exclusively his own, but everything was common property and for use of all. And with great ability, and this is what I'm letting you know, with great ability and power, the apostles were continually testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace, great grace, only mentioned here in, the, in, in the, this particular passage, nowhere else. And great grace is God's enabling power, his favor, his loving kindness, his ten, tender heartedness towards the people. In other words, it was a sense that they didn't lack for anything concerning God's will in terms of spiritually, emotionally, physically, materially, financially, whatever the case might be, they never lack for anything. That's great grace. So God's grace exceeded their giving. And so God would usher in his, his complete heart to them. He would just say, just have it. And so that's verse um, 33. And let me read that again. And, and it says, and with great ability and power, the apostles were continually, continuously testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a continual testifying. So when you're, when you're actually taking communion, you're actually testifying of the goodness of God, of the, of the testifying of the resurrection of Jesus Christ by virtue of the price that he paid in terms of the stripes in his body and also the shedding of his blood. And, but he, he, he was resurrected to testify of that. In other words, to seal the promise. And great grace, great grace, great provision on every size was available. God's remarkable loving kindness and favor and good will rested richly upon them all. So none was left out upon them all. Not in many cases, you'll, you'll go to church and you'll find that some might be blessed, one might have a testimony. It's said upon them all. So they could all testify of God meeting them at more than the point of their need. And verse 34 says, there was not a needy person among them because those who were owners of land or houses were selling them and bringing the proceeds of their sales and placing the money down at the apostle street that is that then it was distributed to each as anyone had need so spiritually as i said financially materially emotionally mentally on every side the physically their needs were being met whether by the grace of God or just by them exercising the love of God one to another, their needs were met. But here is the important thing. When you come together in unity with a certain heart and the presence of the Holy Spirit, this is a representative of the Holy Spirit being present, the, the heart of God, the love of God, the agape love being evident amongst them and here it when it goes on to um chapter five it mentions two people ananias and sapphira so here it is ananias and sapphira this uh, obviously they were um together with these believers 
They were part of the group that came in and, uh, and they had sold their piece of property. And in verse and in verse two of chapter five, it says this, and with his wife, full, wife's full knowledge and complicity, he kept back some of the proceeds, bringing only a portion of it and, and sell it and set it at the apostles' feet. But Peter, and, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? and secretly keep back for yourself some of the land, or, or shall I say, the proceeds of the land. As long as it remained unsold, did it not remain your, your own to do with it as you please? And after it was sold, was the money not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this fact of this act of hypocrisy and deceit in your heart. You have not simply lied to the people, but you, but to God. Very important here because God doesn't mind us not having anything. It's when we have something and then we, we um, say that we're going to share something. So it's like saying, for instance, and I'm going to, uh, I'm connecting the two things, communion and what happened there in terms of the heart attitude. Communion is about a heart attitude. Coming to God, honoring God, honoring all that he stands for. God stands for love. And love is not something that is deceitful. It's not hypocrisy. It's pure. It's clean. It's whole. You have the right attitude in the sense that what you're going to do, you're going to do what, what God would do, what Jesus would. What would Jesus do? He would not discriminate against anybody. If he's, if he's going to do something, it's, it's true to the nature of his father. And so all, all, all um, Peter was uh, in, implying here is that all you have to do is do like everybody else is doing. Now you're cutting against the grain because you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. This is a thing that really grates God. I mean, obviously, it grated God because we know what happened afterwards. But he says, um, as long as it, as long it rem as it remained, and this is verse four, unsold, did it not remain your own to do with it as you please? And after it was sold, was the money not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this act of hypocrisy and deceit in your heart? You have not simply lied to the people, but you have lied to God. So the reality is that when people come and they have a, a form of godliness, what it is, and but denying the power thereof, the power thereof to love like Christ loved, the power they love to walk as Christ walked having a form of godliness and this is what it was they were having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, the, the power that was evidently manifested amongst them that there was great grace amongst them people were being healed people were being made whole complete they walked in a level of prosperity for spirit soul and body but they were denying that power they were not honoring god and the presence of god so what happened and, and hearing these words, verse 5, Ananias fell down suddenly and died, and great fear and awe gripped them, those who had heard of it. And the young men in the congregation got up and wrapped up their body and carried it out and buried it. You might say, what has this got to do with communion? What has this got to do with the Lord's Supper? Lord's Supper? I will share with you later. There is a connection here because it's the same spirit. And Peter asked, um, now after an, an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me whether you sold your land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how could you two have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to test? Look. The feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. 
And once she fell down, at once she fell down at his feet and died. And the young men came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And the word and the word of God says, and great fear and awe gripped the whole church and all who heard about these things. But look here what it says in the in verse 12. At the hands of the apostle, many signs and wonders attesting miracles were continually taking place among the people, and by common consent, they all met together at the temple in a covered porch called Solomon's Portico. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to, I really wanted to lay that as a foundation because what, I, what happened is that as I read, as I read the scriptures, I was thinking, why God are you taking me here? And then I went, flipped back to, um, I flipped back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And then it, I thought, ah, did fellowship, the sweet koinonia of the Holy Spirit. It's coming together with one heart, one soul, and one mind in the Holy Spirit is not a religious thing. It's not religion. It's a life of God. It's an essence of who God is. God is love. And by virtue of that, what that scripture in Acts was telling me is that they had come to a place where love just flowed. The love of God that was shed in the broad in their hearts just flowed out of them. And so as the love flowed out one to another, as the body, the group, great the great presence of God was there it was evident and so there was lacking for any nothing and so I looked at this scripture uh, passage of scripture then I thought okay so what you're saying here and it says um and I'm going to read it from verse 17 uh, so this is first Corinthians 11 and verse 17 and it says but in giving this instruction I do not praise you because when you meet together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. And so he's talking to the Corinthian church now, the Corinthian brethren now who are meeting. But what it is, they're not entering into the spirit or into the true nature of the love feast and the Lord's Supper. <laughs> Master, so sorry. Okay, sorry, someone just wrote something on the chat so, as I was talking. But, but in giving this next instruction, I do not praise you because when you meet together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you meet together in church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. For doubtless there have to, there have, to be factions among you so that those who are approved characters may be clearly recognized among you. In other words, what he was saying there, there are factions. In other words, there are groups. In other words, there, there's a sort of class system that is now going on in the church. In other words, people are esteemed more highly than other people. In other words, the poor, were being neglected, or the, those that were not, say, title, were neglected. And it says here is that, so when you meet together, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for when you eat, each one hurries to get his own supper first, not waiting for others or the poor. So when, so one goes hungry while others get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Lord's Supper. <laughs> they're having fellowship. They're having a love feast. And basically what they're saying, they're not thinking about one another, but those who are, uh, shall I say, exalted, those that have titles, those that have positions, they are 
taking the initiative, so to speak, to eat first. And so they're gouging themselves with all food, manner of food, whether it be meat and everything, else, but also they're drinking alcohol and they're getting drunk. This is disgraceful. <laughs> but they're getting drunk, you see. And but what it is, it's about the neglect of one another, dishonoring the body, dishonoring the body of Christ, which is the brothers and sisters, irrespective of their post position, um, their economic situation, their status, whatever. They were dishonoring them. And so it says, why do you not have, why, what? Do you not have houses, verse 22, in which to eat and drink or to do, or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those impoverished believers who have nothing? What will I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? In this will... I will not praise you. So it goes on to say, for, and this is Paul speaking, speaking, speaking now. He says, for I've received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is represents my body which is broken which is offered as a sacrifice for you do this in affectionate remembrance of me now you can see that the 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 connection between the church as it was the corinthian church and taking of the lord's supper as paul had instructed the church to do was poles apart. It was contrary to the practice of Jesus Christ, even when he had the Last Supper. And he says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is the, represents the body which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affectionate rem remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant, ratified, established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. So what he was saying there, he was saying, as often as you can come together and have the love feast and communion, continually do it to honor and represent and remember the memory of Jesus Christ and all that he accomplished for you through his death and through his resurrection. The power of his stripes to heal you and the power of his blood to make you as one family in the family of God. And so in verse, um, so first 26, it says, for everyone, every time you eat and eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes. So this is reminding us of Jesus Christ making him conscious, making us be aware of who he is and what he represents to us as the body of Christ until he comes in, ter in terms of until we be glorified with him. And it goes on to say in verse um, 27, so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him, will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, 
Why have you sinned against the Holy Spirit? Why have you sinned against Jesus? Why have you sinned against God? But a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ. And only when he has done so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence and heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ, eats and drinks a judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. So in effect, what he's saying there is that when you come, acknowledge from your heart the true reason why you're coming to have fellowship, why you're coming to have a love feast. It's about coming in unity and coming as one heart, one soul, and one mind to share the memory of Jesus Christ and all that is done for us. That's what it's about. This is not a ritualistic thing that you do it religiously. This is about recognizing all that Jesus accomplished for us through his death and through his resurrection. All it is about recognizing the power that has been made available to us through his love. And not only that, this is also about recognizing that as we do partake of the communion, that we are representing the Father's heart in terms of reaching out to one another, saying we are one in this. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are doing it together. And so it's, it's so, on a personal level, it says, examine yourself. It's not saying come guilty. It's not saying you have to be perfect. It's saying examine yourself. If there's anything in your heart, and, and you can make reference to the beginning of this passage of scripture, where there were dissensions. In other words, people were probably fighting one another. They were malicing one another. There was a sense of pride. People were putting one another down. There were cliques and there were groups. All these things, are you a part of a clique? Are you a part of a group? Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. But he says, examine yourself. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence and heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ, eats and drinks a judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. So it's recognizing the body of Christ. It's recognizing honoring one another. So when we honor one another, when we respect one another, when we have no discrimination to one another, when we, there's no respecters of persons, then we're honoring the body of Christ. We're honoring the, the, the act of coming to have communion. That's why it's called communion, which is the Lord's Supper. And he says, verse 13, that careless and unworthy pity participation is the reason why many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep in death. What? I bet you never read that one before. What are you talking about? Weak and sick. So you're saying if I come and have fellowship and say that I'm going to share in a love feast or communion, and I don't honor my brother and sister. It could be the reason that I might be sickly. That's what the word of God is saying there. And some might even sleep, die. Even like Ananias and Sapphira. You understand? Because they were one heart, one soul, and one mind. They were indiscriminate. In other words, they didn't discriminate against one another. They came with a purity of heart as one serving the Lord. 
And it's the same in the same vein here. It's saying we ought to take communion with a lot more seriousness and a lot more respect and honor rather than just taking it as a ritual like many do. The, the, you know, through the um, churches, they take it as a, many of them just take it as something that they do religiously. But this is not about that. This is about God who is love. God is love. And exercising the love of God in take a communion. And so what God is saying here, you do it in remembrance of Jesus Christ and everything that he accomplished through his death and through his resurrection. That means all power has been made available to the body of Christ when they do it in union and with one heart, one mind, and one soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, I long for the day when we all come together and the love feast. And we'll have the love feast. And even while we're having the love feast, the anointing and the presence of God will just come down and, <laughs> and people will be just healed, set free and delivered just by having a love feast. And not more so than that, we'll have communion as well. We're shared in the sacraments of God. And just know that the presence of God, the glory of God would be manifested as in the early church. This is what it was all about. And so it's, it's a serious thing. When you come to have communion that we recognize the true purpose of it. And the true purpose of it is to express the love that we have for one another, but also remember that we are the body of Christ and that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the dwelling place of God. And so knowing that we are the dwelling place of God, we should honor the body of Christ and what it represents and come in integrity and in love one to another and love unto God. One thing I recognize throughout the scripture is this. Everything we do is hung on two scriptures. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as you will love yourself. That's what this is talking about. You may never have seen the communion from that perspective, but that's what it's talking about. When it talked about the early church, it was talking about the same thing, being on one accord. So the fact of the matter, Paul here was talking about, he was saying, I cannot praise you for what is happening in a church because you're coming in there and you're running rough shoddy over the young believers and the, the, the poor saints or whatever the case might be, the, those that don't have, and you're, not, you're neglecting them. And you are having a feast all by yourself. In actual fact, you're bringing food, but, and you're eating the same food that you're bringing without even sharing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So verse 31 says, but if we evaluate, if we evaluated and judged ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we would not be judged. It's simple. Take responsibility and say, and be honest before God and say, God, I'm not there. I've been found wanting in this area and that area. God, forgive me. Repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. God's not counting your shortcomings and your sins and your failings against him, against you. All he's saying is, that's honor me. Honor me. And he says, um, but when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing his correction. Whatever you do, don't come under judge, God's judgment because he might judge you in a way, not because he wants to expose your weakness, but because he loves you. 
because God loves you, whom God loves, he chastises because he wants you to be saved. And so he will save your soul before you fall away or depart from the faith. That's what he's saying here. Before you fall away and you get into yourself, he's saying, I will bring judgment upon you. If you can't bring it upon yourself and be humble enough to yield to my will, then I will bring judgment on you because I love you. Because I love you. Hallelujah. But when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing his correctness, correction so that we will not be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. So why does God do it? So that we, so there's some things God will do because he says, if you continue to do it, that only shows that you are professing Christian. And so that you will be with the world. You will be judged like the world. Separation, being separated from God. And he doesn't want that. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat the Lord's Supper, wait for one another and see to it that no one is left out. If any is too hungry to wait, let him eat at home. In other words, if you can't wait, if you can't wait for the Lord, Lord's Last Supper or the Lord's Supper or the Love Feast, or if you can't wait, if you're too hungry, then he's saying that eat at home. Satisfy yourself at home. At least you're not going to come and deny somebody or think about yourself when you come in fellowship one with another. That's basically what he's saying there. If anyone is too hungry to wait, let him eat at home so that you will not come together for judgment on yourself. About the remaining matters of which I was informed, I will take care of them when I come. Praise be to God. And I know that um, perhaps you never heard it read like that. I mean, because we just get to the nitty gritty. Let's take communion and we just, as often as you do this, drink tea, eat tea with grace in your heart. As often as you drink this, drink tea with grace in your heart. And that's it. All over, done. We've gone through the ritual and that's it. There's more to it. Everything God puts down in his scripture is because he wants you to be maximized through identifying with his son. That's what it's all about. He wants you to be maximized by identifying with his son, Jesus Christ. He wants you to experience the power of almighty God in fellowship. That's what it's all about. It's not about any one of us. It's not I'm better than you or I'm, I'm more anointed than you or I have more power than you. It's about coming together, laying down all our status, all our whatever we have, and just being able to share and commune with one another. That's why it's called communion. Having all things in common as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That means that there's no re room for the devil. So when the devil turns up and says, you're not worthy, say, I am worthy. Father, forgive me. Mm -hmm. And you're worthy. You're worthy now. Father, forgive me. That's all it takes. Acknowledge being humble. Mm -hmm. Don't be proud and think, Whoa. be humble. That's all he's requiring. God is not there. He's not counting your sins against you. He's not there thinking, yeah, I'm counting it up now. I'm just waiting until you get to number 10 sin that is unconfessed, and then I'm going to take you out. God is not like that. He's being gracious enough to say to you that if you keep doing the thing, if it's habitual, if you keep 
um, dismissing your brother and sister. If you don't have any care and any love towards the body of Christ, then I'm going to have to do something to wake you up. I'm going to bring you under the judgment because I want you to be saved. I want you to get to heaven. And he might even take you out before your time. That's what God is saying. Never thought about it like that. But that's the word of God. That's the word of God. So, bless you. Um, I just um, really wanted us to just get a sense of what true communion is. It's loving one another. Just to be, cons even when you take communion, consider this is why um when you when you're fasting when you're praying and everything it's not about you it's about it's about breaking the bond of wickedness over people's lives it's about it extends beyond you the love itself enables people it lifts them up it encourages people it makes them feel like they're part of a family a special, special family. What then happens is that the, the oppression that they might be carrying or the cares that they might be carrying, all those fade away. When you come into community, the, the things that you worry about, mm -hmm. it moves the heart of a believer to say, you know what? Don't worry, I've got it. I'll pay for that. I take care of that. I'll provide. I mean, all these things happen when we're coming together as one in the body of Christ. And so this, the taking of the communion is a common denominator. It's the foundation. It's the bedrock for all those things happening. And I just really wanted to, um, just to say that I remember um, a story um, that I read in a book about John, John J. Lake, John C. Lake. And uh, he was um, a great um, missionary. He went to Africa and other parts of the world. But one of the things that um, I read about him was that he was a person that continually <laughs> shared in the love feast. Lo um, he had communion continually. And what happened, he would go into some areas where people would die of certain diseases and such things like that. And um, even other missionaries. But because he was a person that really loved God and loved people, but he, he, it was almost habitual that he would just have communion on a daily basis. And they said that, um, what they what amazed the, um, those that were looking at his life was that how comes he's unaffected by all these diseases and these viruses and all these sicknesses and everything? He walks in divine health. How is it? And like people would um, be um, stung by um, mosquitoes and they got malaria and all these type of thing and they're thinking, what is happening? And so they decided to take out an experiment do an experiment on him and they got a, uh, took some blood from uh, they extracted some blood from him and they put it under a microscope and they said when they put it under a microscope the 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 the, the blood it glowed there was a light and then they put a mosquito or, or whatever uh, insect on it and the mosquito would just die and so isn't that remarkable? <laughs> he had immunity against sicknesses and diseases because he loved God, he loved people, and he took communion. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the broken body of Jesus, the resurrected body of Jesus. And so, I just really want you to say that as often as you, you do this, you sh do show the remembrance of the Lord until he comes. 
As often as you do it, there is power that is made available to you. Love God, love your fellow men, and commune, connect. One with another. Connect by partaking in the remembrance of Jesus Christ through, com through the communion. There's power. Hallelujah. We're going to, I'm just going to, just going to take, um, take your emblems. I just wanted to, you to get your emblems right now. And we're going to just um, take a um, little time for you to get it. And I just want you to, um, for those of you behind the scenes, if you can get your communion together, please. It's for every one of us. There's no one as brothers and sisters sh that should not be taking it because we have opportunity to just go before God right now and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me of my trespasses, of my shortcomings, my failings right now. I repent of my sins, Father God. Yes, I've walked in neglect and disobedience, but Father, right now I come to your throne, I come to your altar, and I pour pour out my heart to you right now and say that I'm sorry. And so, Father, right now, I know that I'm accepted because I know that by the stripes I was healed 2,000 years ago. I was received through your blood by the acknowledgement as you, of you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna, so we're gonna we're gonna pray for the bread. So we're gonna just um we're gonna bless um the communion right now, and then we're gonna partake of it. And uh, as you're doing so, I really want you to have that sense that you are loved of God. I share those scriptures because what God is saying that is there's so much more that you need to receive, that we need to receive as a body of Christ. And uh, don't let anybody fool you. We are meant to fellowship one with another. That's, a, <laughs> that's why we're called a body. You never see a dissected body anywhere. A dissected body is a dead body. So coming together as a body is so very important. So I'm just gonna pray right now. Hallelujah. You can hold up your emblems and I, as I just pray over them. Heavenly Father, Amen. I just thank you right now. I thank you for this time. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I th thank you for, sh thank you. for the word, Amen. Father God, that has been imparted and Amen. for the meaning, the true meaning of what it is to have fellowship one with another. And Father, just to partake of the love, Lord's Supper and communion, in remembrance of what you did. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who stripped himself of all his glory, all his majesty, and he came down in human flesh to be amongst us as a high priest, tempted as we are, yet without sin. And so, Father God, right now, I thank you that we can come boldly onto the throne of grace, even right now, to find grace to help in a time of need. And Father, just to identify with what you did on the cross and through your resurrection. And so Father, I just bless these emblems that are before us right now. I pray you're anointing upon them, that they be sanctified for the reason for which it is given so that it might empower us and continually remind us of your grace and your mercy and your love towards us. And so, Father, I commit them to you right now and pray even as we take of them that it might, it might make a difference today, but not only for today, but for tomorrow and the day after and the week after and the year after and for the rest of our lives, Father, as we continue to remember you in this act of fellowship. So, Father, bless the wine, bless the bread, 
Mm. Father, I thank you for that which will be manifested through it as we partake of, take of it right now in Jesus' name. And so, as the word of God says, for this, for I have received from the Lord himself that instruction which I pass unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this represents my body, which is broken, which is offered as a mm -hmm. sacrifice for you. you Do God. this in affectionate remembrance of me. Take ye all of it right now Thank in Jesus' you, name. Thank you, Jesus. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in affectionate remembrance of me. Take the cup right now and drink ye all of it with grace in your heart. Hallelujah. For every time you eat the, this bread and drink this cup, you are symbol symbolically proclaiming the fact that the Lord's death until he comes again. Praise be to God. Praise. I just want us to pray right now and just thank God for his grace and his mercy. And I'm just going to pray. Thank you, too. Father. I'm just going to pray. I want you to all to pray, but I'm Praise just going to pray as well. I want you to thank God for what Thanks, he's doing Father. at this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your What power. has been affected in our lives this thank moment. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The provision that has been made available Hallelujah. to us at thank this you. moment. Thank you for going yes. I want you to receive that anointing. Yes, Lord. Right, that You're grace divine. that has come that removes every burden and destroys every yoke of the enemy. Thank right you right for now. your authority, Lord. Thank, thank you for your power in the blood. In the blood, thank you, your thank you Father God, for broken your heaven. body, shedding thank your blood abroad for us, Lord. Thank, thank you, you Father. Father God, for thank you, Lord. breaking Lord. yourself and taking us. Shedding of the blood, Hallelujah. your blood. Of Jesus. Father, we thank you that our in children will be made sin. strong because yet, yeah, thank thank Father God, we practice that was the Lord. Father, our husbands, our wives, Father Lord, we will God that will be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Situation, Father, every Straight, Lord. Every situation that seems to hinder us, hinder us from your goodness, Father, right now will be coming to in its own name, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for your love for us, that you are shed abroad for us, Father God. And Lord Jesus, that we will go out and spread the good news and say, that Father God, speak to people, and Father, they will be healed, they will be set free, they will be delivered. You will know you, Father. God, for them, thank you, Father, that you have given us authority over all things. In the name of the Father, Lord, we will decree a Lord, thing, we will declare a thing, Lord, and it shall bless. come to pass in existence. By your name. Thank you for you, Father, for allowing us, Lord, the blood that through the blood of Jesus Christ, open up by every stripes that you have gained, Father, and be cast out, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed. Lord, by your blood that has been shed. Hallelujah. On the cross, the blood, we are revived in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord. Father, every situation Lord revive blood. us right Hallelujah. now. Every mindset, Somewhere we revive you, Lord. Lord. Thank you Lord. The blood Lord, right now, we thank you for the blood. Thank we thank you for the blood. For the blood. The blood of Jesus that washes right as snow. Thank you for your body that was broken. Thank you, Lord, that you can, your Father has sent you to sacrifice. Father, your life for us, Lord, hallelujah, we've given up 
Thank you, Lord. God. Hallelujah. Father, you could have changed your mind, but you said, no, I will. But thy will be done. Thank you, Lord, for going through to the cross for our sakes that we are here today. Father, we pray for love to be engrafted in our community, to be engrafted in the, the body of Christ, to be back to life, Lord, in equipping people, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in anaposis, Father, Lord, for every church that we know, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray that love in a community will abide in the name of Jesus because of your blood. So, Father, because of your blood that shed, Lord, hallelujah, let your people receive revelation in the hindsight of your love, your agape love in the name of, bring revelation to our eyes, Lord, that we may have sight beyond sight to see what you are saying to us, Father, that we can operate in your will to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer, Father, but to repeat, Lord, what you have done here on earth, Lord, what you have done, Father God. So we thank you for authority, Jesus. You said greater things that we shall do, Father, Lord, hallelujah, than you have done here on earth, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we take off your body and we take off the blood, we pray, Father, Lord, that we will speak the thing into existence in the name of Jesus, Father God. And because of your word, it will be yea and amen in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we decree and declare, Father, by your word, by the stripes that we are healed, that no depression won't be ours anymore, Father God. Hallelujah. Father, we won't be depressed anymore. We won't be oppressed anymore. Father, Lord, we will be in joy and happiness, Lord, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We decree in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for our happiness, Lord. We thank you for revival in our community. We thank you for revival in the youths, in the parents, in the preachers and the teachers, Father, and the prophets. Father, we pray that the revival, Father, will be missed right now and stirred up. Father, we pray that the water is troubled right now, Father. Trouble the water for your people right now, Father, that we may step in, Lord, and be saved and be healed and be transformed. Transform, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now, Father God, for all the good and wonderful and miraculous things that you are about to do. The mighty things that you are about to do this year. We declare and declare and thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies and the wonders that you're set before us, Father God, because there is power in the blood. There is power in the mighty blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood because you have went to the cross in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. As we sit here, stand here, Father, whatever we are doing, Father, we declare by your blood, hallelujah, we have overcome. We have overcome every situation. We have gained strength in the area of our weaknesses in the name of Jesus right now. Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood, Lord. We thank you for the blood. Thank you. Thank you, Abba, for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. And we thank you, Father God, because there's power. There's power in the blood. We thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We glorify your name. Kiorobosana. Rabba sikia robo kosha. Inda bo siki sikia robo. Inda bo hiero bo siki sikia robo kosha. Ikisia robo shikisiere. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the blood. For the blood never loses its power. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Amen. Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God. I just pray that you have been energized. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know that you have been energized. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I know that you've been invigorated. Amen. I know that you've been empowered. Mm -hmm. And it's by his grace and his mercy. Amen. I really want you to just take cognizance of his word. Mm -hmm. there's, an, there's so much revelation mm -hmm. in what Jesus administered. We call it the Last Supper, but there's so much revelation through the, in just 
sharing that last supper. He could have judged um, Judas. He could have exposed Judas, but he didn't do that. <laughs> he, he gave Judas enough time to um, repent of what he was about to do. But even him, Jesus said, whatsoever thou doest, do it quickly. And so G Judas just snuck out of the room un unnoticed. But that's God's love through Jesus Christ. He, Judas was, the, even though Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed by one of his disciples, even though he knew that his disciples would disown him, <laughs> they would flee from him, they would, uh, you know, just go their own way. Even though he knew that Peter would deny him three times, he still had that last supper with him, which shows the love of God. Mm, can be and restored. You can be restored. Amen. You can be made whole. Yes. And, I was, be, and be forgiven. Be forgiven. Judas mm. chose to do what he did. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to die that way, but it was his decision. Mm -hmm. He chose to do it. And if he wanted to say, the devil made me do it, so be it. He chose to do it, though. He had a will. He could have said, no, I'm not going to. Uh, let me do what I did and go back and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for what I did. But he chose that route. And I'm saying to you, the communion speaks about God's grace and his love towards us. Mm. And it's a continual reminder of what Jesus represented and who he represented when he walked this earth. And so go and do likewise. Mm. Be that example of Jesus Christ. Mm. And remember, even as the word says, as he is, so are we in this world. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so when we partake of communion, we're not doing it religiously. We're doing it because we know who we are in mm. Christ. Mm. We are more than conquerors in mm. Christ Jesus. And so Satan is squarely under our feet. Mm. Praise be to God. So we're not doing it because it's, it sounds good and it looks it looks good and it's a nice thing to do, but we're doing it because we're identifying we're remembering the blood and the broken body of Christ. Yes, and all that it represents, the power to heal, to set free and mm. deliver. So impart that into your everyday walk mm. as you relate to your father and to your brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, every one of Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Be empowered. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to be blessed by a song, and I'm sure that it will I it will um, connect with uh, what we've administered today. Praise be. Don't leave us yet. Amen. Go ahead, Keith. <laughs>